the first thing I think about, I always have it in my mind that it has to be musical. Making your drumming a little more, you know, interesting, I guess, with, with by using these things to create a modern groove, not being afraid to put yourself in the limelight a little bit.
Awesome. Welcome, everybody. My name is Kyle. We're here at Drumeo today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, welcome, to everybody, on YouTube, on Facebook, and, of course, our Edge members. Today with us in the studio, we have the absolutely amazing Raghav Marhotra. Yes. Marhotra. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hi, what's up? How you doing today, man? Good. I'm actually... Really surprisingly good. Usually I'm tired. When You're not I'm in LA. normally good. Oh. No, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good. But like today I'm like really really good. good. You know I, I think it's because I'm drumio. But I, I've been watching you all day. You are definitely really good. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, abs everybody, Raghav is fantastic. He's uh, joining us today. He's, uh, I'm going to tell him how old you are. I'm going to do it. 15 years old, and is a phenomenal player. Um, you've been playing since you were three, right? Yeah. That's Just amazing, about. absolutely. And uh, we're so excited to have you here uh, yeah. because you kind of bring this whole new kind of, the next generation of drummers to us. And you know, you've already accomplished so much in your, in your career and you have some great insight and some ideas that you want to share with everybody. You're big on social media. I think on Instagram, you've got about 24,000 followers, yeah. which is enormous, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, and it's, you've got lots of cool ideas coming up. In fact, one of the things we're talking about is what the topic of our lesson today is, is developing modern groups. Yes. And, and so we're talking about that. I, I was watching some of your videos and I'm just like, what are you doing there? It's amazing. Like, not like, what are you doing? I'm like, what's, what is this? This is really exciting. It's really inspiring. And you're like, oh, well, it's, it's these really cool ideas and, and it's super exciting. So uh, I thought we'd discuss those and show those today. So let's just get right into this. So yeah. um, before we get super deep into the grooves, what, what inspires you about a groove? What is the, the, the stuff that makes you want to like, get into it? I mean, inspiration-wise, um Inspiration for a groove can come from just about anything. Um, it came, I was at uh, a Wildwood boardwalk down in, in Jersey. Okay. And I heard this, this train going by and the sound for the train is watch the tram car, please. I was like, huh, <laughs> that's cool. So I took that watch the tram car, please. I put it in a loop. I played something over it. Okay. It, it can come from literally anything. That, that's probably the most random thing. Okay. Watch the tram car, Do you remember please. what you played? Yeah, I did. Show me. Okay, so it was like, <laughs> um, so I had to watch the tram car, please, going in the background. And watch then I, the tram car, please. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And then there was like this little sax thing over it, oh. and I went like. <laughs> something like that. I mean. As, as random as watch the tram car please can inspire someone to do anything. I love so, that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so we have, we, we talk about groove all the time as drummers, right? Yeah. And we talk about, you know, different ways of, of changing things up. And sometimes we get really kind of bogged down in linear ideas or rhythmic ideas. But we were talking more so like what's modern, like what's happening now and sort of how are we approaching that? So you and I were discussing, uh, you know, taking like basic beats and how we would sort of, or how you would expand them and, and create these other ideas. So. What makes a beat modern? Um, so I was having a lot of trouble coming in um, defining that concept of modern groove because it's, it's, it's the kind of thing where you know it when you hear it, but it's just a little, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to define sometimes. But I, I came up with a couple of traits um, that I think really, when, when you hear those traits, when you hear like three or more of those traits in a, in a groove, it's, it's more on the modern side. And, um, it's something like, you know, if you have a layering of rhythm is, is a big one. And I think all of this goes really bad. It goes full circle completely because I was, from talking to people about, you know, like Elvin Jones, okay. who's, who's a pioneer in drumming, mm -hmm. um, uh, it, uh, he did stuff like layering of rhythm and polyrhythm. Sure. Um, that's a big one in modern groove. There's also, you know, the, the elastic kind of time feel which developed. Then, and it's, it's, it's become modernized in like the Dilla stuff. All the hip hop and, and the PC kind of kind of culture. It, yeah, um, yeah, it's amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. And also just, you know, those two alone, they really serve as just a great indicator. If you, if you hear those two, then you're set in that okay. modern groove. So let's dig into a couple of these ideas. So yeah. we've got layering rhythms. Yeah. So give me an example of a beat that would have layered rhythms in it. All right, so, uh, you know, something like this, can, you can layer rhythms between multiple different uh, limbs. You can layer rhythms between even like just the chick of a hi-hat on the quarter notes and some other rhythm anywhere else on, on the drum set. But you know, something like this would be something like layering rhythms. Okay, 
So what's that based in? What is the core of that, and then what are you doing to it to get that layering happening? All right, so I think the, the, the foundation of that groove is that pattern between you know, the kick and the snare. That's completely essential if you want to play this groove. So what I'm playing is basically something like this. Backbeat, and this is a groove in six, by the way. Okay. Um, a backbeat, basically on on the on the snare, and you go and a three e and a four e and a five e and a, e and a six e and a. so, you know the one and the end on here, uh, one and the end of the one. Yep. And then yeah, backbeat on the snare, and I think that's that is. That's the, that's the foundation, but the real driving force of this groove is what I'm playing on the hi-hat. Right, because that's almost giving you a sense of it being almost in 4-4, four, four, or like at least a, a cycled pattern of, of exactly. it staying, right? Yeah. Because if you play it, could you play that same kick and snare pattern with a different pattern on top that's less layered? Yeah, totally. Can you give me an example of that? Yeah. Is um is not as layered on the hi hat because the hi hat's just playing one and two and three and four and five and six. It's just playing eighth notes. Right. But with with the groove that I played before, the hi hat is the driving force in that I'm playing this rhythm one and a two and a three and a four, but flipped. So. So it's a one and two and yeah, three exactly, and exactly. four and yeah. So I think that flipping it not only adds a little bit of unique factor to it, but you know just drives it a little bit forward. You know. of it even as like the reverse chug of a train. Exactly. If that makes any sense. And yeah. I think the other thing too, we're talking about layering rhythms, I think the other big difference here is, I, I'm an older person, I'm a little bit older than you are, and I, I come from a bit different background of course, and so when I hear a groove like that, what's interesting to me is how you're uh, subdividing the kick drum part and you're taking it from like a, a pattern, it's not cycling every every bar, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bigger pattern. Yeah. And because of that, it does create sort of an illusion. The snare stays consistent, Yeah. But then you've got this hi-hat rhythm. It's you know it's sort of like this intertwining groove. We're not really quite a polyrhythm. It's, it could be argued as one. Not really. But it's not really. But because it's a longer pattern, that's kind of where the modern idea comes in. We have these exactly. sort of disjointed patterns, but it's we're we're hearing it in a bigger bigger piece. Exactly. It all it all links up. And a lot a lot of grooves are like this that I, I've noticed in that that I play even. A lot of grooves are in two bar cycles. So you'll have one mm. bar of something, and the second bar will have most of the same components, but something will differ. And in this case, it works out perfectly because this hi-hat pattern goes over the bar. And being that it goes over the bar, it just kind of it, um, it resolves at that, that second bar, which makes it really good. Well, it creates longer tension. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're expecting it to come back, and then you do something different with the bass drum. We're like, what's happening now? Are we, are we in like a million? What's, what, what, ta <sighs> what time signature is this in? I'm, I'm confused, but the snare drum's still in time. So you're like, yes. well, if I lock into that, and it's like, oh, hang on a second, right? There's, this, there's like something, something that you, that's like a rope that you can hold on to right here. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and then you're doing something between uh, two different limbs, or and it really applies to anything. If you're, if you're playing something on the ride, you have three limbs to, or four limbs even, to just experiment with and do whatever you want with. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so that's the idea of layering, and that's great. And, and I think it's important also to discuss that kind of in a longer phrase like that too. So the other one we, we talk about is uh, create, uh, sorry, conversation between limbs. I can't read my own writing, and I <laughs> typed it. It's very weird. Um, conversation between limbs. So what is that referred to in this case? It could be a different groove, but what, how do you de define that? It's, um, I actually, the funny thing is it's, I try to include the same thing in the same groove, but um, I'll move to a little later portion of the groove where it's it's more mostly improv, but the conversation between the limbs I think is pretty apparent. And I'll give you a few exercises so you can develop that yourself. So it goes. So you can hear that almost arguing, I like to think of, between the snare and the kick. <laughs> yes. It's like, so something you can do at home to, to, to get this in your playing. Say, make up, a, as, as weird as it might sound to other people, talk to yourself. It might sound a little, little like what, but you know, talk to yourself. Make one limb want 
pepperoni pizza. Okay, pizza is a great example. And then make the make the other limb want I don't know like pineapple pizza. You guys can decide at home which one you like. But make those two limbs in in a musical sense argue. So if I'm doing something, I'll do an example of that real quick. I have my snare that wants pepperoni pizza, and I have my kick that wants pepperoni pizza, and you'll hear them kind of push and pull at each other, and then at, at points overlap because they, they really want to argue their point. So something like this. I think that's that's uh, that's a really great exercise. Just picking picking two limbs and and keep it simple. You know, just alternating even like similar rhythms between each other. So, say I was to pick a rhythm such as the eighth note or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm in like a four four time signature, and I just have each limb alternate in playing that rhythm. So I go one and two and three and four. to make it, uh, phrase it a little bit more, like put it in different times. So maybe not play the exact same amount of notes in each limb. Maybe play one set of eighth notes in the snare and then three in the kick and uh, make it a little bit different. Something like this. So that, that's a way you can develop uh, how, how you're conversing between your two limbs. Now, when you're doing that, I guess the other key thing here is make sure you're staying in four or whatever. Yeah, or any time I think that, the big that, key there is with. whatever you choose to play, yeah. that's, it's, and you're, you're really improvising. Yeah. Right? And especially when you're getting into doing those conversations between the limbs, um, in a bigger picture, you're hearing it in time, and you're freeing yourself up to be able to do those things. It's like comping in jazz, yeah. right? But you're able to do it in this style, which is definitely very modern. We have a lot of, I think, I think because we have a lot of modern music that there's a lot of editing done and creating parts. Uh, I think because of the tension it creates, we get these sort of uh, interesting and convoluted drum parts mm -hmm. that we're now kind of developing on our own. Yeah. Well, we're talking about Jay Dilla, it's like, Okay, he programmed those, and now we're trying to figure out how to play them as human beings. And that's yeah, like yeah. a whole other topic, yeah. which we're going to get to in a minute. What a segue. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think working on, that, on a pattern as simple as it in four like that and just kind of experimenting with those, that's a great idea for yeah. sure. Um, do you still, when you're playing those ideas, are they now just ingrained and you're not thinking? Or are you still kind of trying to decide what to play when you're playing Okay, when in I, conversation, yeah. that is. In conversation, yeah. the first thing I think about when I, I, this I guess applies to any type of groove that you're playing, that the first thing I think about, I always have it in my mind that it has to be musical. It can't be a, a ton of notes and not, not sound, you can't, look, drummers are, whether we like it or not, hired to keep the groove and to keep the backbone of of the music, and I mean, we're not hired to solo, sadly. That'd be really cool, though. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if it doesn't make someone, like, bob their head or, you know, get up and want to do something, then it, then it might not be the ideal groove. Not saying that it might not be for what the music calls for, but, you know, in, that, in the context of a drummer wanting to like, get people to, to move, you know, bob their head, tap their foot kind of thing, it might not be the ideal thing. So musicality is definitely my number one priority. In conversations, um, I I really just try to again think about like two people arguing kind of thing. But I sometimes uh, try to think about a specific rhythm. Okay. Like I was doing with the eighth notes. Yep. Take the eighth notes and put it between two limbs or even just one limb and keep a rest at one point just to start. And that really introduces a sense of it just it, a layer a layer to your playing kind of thing, a layer of rhythm. Yeah, and I think a big thing here for, for the viewers too is, is that you're not, um, it doesn't matter how complex the patterns are, it's the idea and the concept of trying to do it and getting used to doing it and playing it, right? Yeah. It's, it's certainly, um, it's the mindset of getting into it and, and coming up with those patterns yes. and, and developing your own too, mm -hmm. right? These are your vocabulary ideas that we're hearing right now. Yeah. You probably got some inspiration from somewhere. Yeah. Like, 
uh, what was the saying? Uh, the the train station. Oh, the watch the tram car, please. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, like like honestly, that's that's a great. There's rhythm all around us, and you could totally take that idea and play it. Yeah. You know, right? And then add it into something you're grooving with, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let's talk a little about our next point, which was time elasticity. Yeah. So um, what does what does that mean? Okay. Time, Tell an old guy what time elasticity means. Time elasticity. You have you have a bar. You have a bar or a beat or, or a bar. Let's take a bar. Bar of time, a not bar, a, a bar. drinking bar. Yes, yes, a bar of time. Okay. Mm-hmm. You take a bar of time. Yeah. And instead of playing dead center with, if you have a click track at like 120, 100 BPM, BPM, whatever you want, instead of playing dead center with that track, like I'm about to demonstrate, mm-hmm. you play a little behind the beat and then to, to, um, to basically complement that, you play a little uh, um, ahead of the beat as well. So kind of sway, if this is the beat, kind of swaying like a little, yep. like, a, like a snake, like that. And, but you're always in, the, in, in, in time. Technically. This is a really difficult thing to discuss. Yeah. Because uh, we're taught as drummers, play to the click, play to time, play in time, play to the click, play to the track, <laughs> right? And now you're saying, yeah, not so much, yeah. right? But it's like- Learn it's, the rules, then you break them. That's right. But it's knowing how to do that. So I want you to do this. Yeah. So I think maybe just play, I'm gonna give you 100 BPM, and I want maybe you to play like just some time, and then start really doing what you're gonna do to it. But then I wanna talk about how you approach that and how you learn to do it. Because yeah. that's the key. Right, so this is 100 BPM? Yeah. It's a song I like to call 100 BPM. It's a classic. Here we go. So I'm gonna play dead on the click. Yeah, and I'm gonna play on top of it, and I'll do like a little behind, and then I'll show you you know, how you can waver between the two. At three, sorry. of the beat might be like so that might sound out of time but as long as you're consistently playing that much ahead of the click then then mm-hmm. then you're okay mm-hmm. but you first have to, disclaimer, try it at home before you try it at a gig. <laughs> yes. Try, do try this at home. Please. Do not try, try this at the job. Yes. Got it. Okay, let's try the third one, then I got some questions for you. Yeah. So, here we go. Is hard to do in that <laughs> it is it's so fun, but when you get it wrong, it's just like, oh, at least to me, I kind of like, dang it, I you know, but it's once you apply that and once you have music that calls for that, and then a lot of music nowadays, even like modern jazz, if you see like Robert Glasper play with Chris Dave, they they have a section in the in in, in his residencies when I've been. They they have a section where they go into like that Dilla style, which is behind the beat. From what they're playing, it's crazy, like amazing stuff. And then they go Dilla, and it's just like, ooh, you know, if you have that, if you have that in your vocabulary, it'd be okay. really great. So, um, fantastic. And that is, you're right. It's so hard to do. Sitting next to you and having that click playing, uh, you know, I gravitate towards to the click. And then when you're playing ahead, I feel anxious. And when you play behind the beat, I feel anxious. It's interesting, but it creates this amazing tension. tension. Now. The, th- the, th- the question or thought I think a lot of people have then was, well, why don't you just slow the tempo down or speed the tempo up and just play to that? But that's not the point. The point is elasticizing that time. Making, right. uh, make it feel different. If you slow down the tempo and everybody else is playing at that tempo and you're playing at that tempo, then it's just at the tempo. But if, you, if everybody else is playing a little bit and you have like maybe you, uh, maybe uh, no, not, not everybody's playing at that tempo, but the, everybody is making a little bit of an effort to just drag it a little bit, but keeping like 
one note on the time, mm. it sounds great. Yes, and it is, it's, it's again, it kind of goes to the whole idea. I think as, as we get more modern with music and sort of how we develop things, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, the, the world is so, uh, um, uh, there's information everywhere, right? Like, we were talking earlier, one of the very first things you ever saw when you learned to play drums was? Was? Was actually drumming. Right? And, and yeah. that's, that's amazing, right? Like, that's the culture and, and world we live in, and, like, and there's, everything is available all the time. Yeah. Right? And because of that, um, I think, you know, you're 15, and you've already absorbed a ton of stuff, right? And this is where music's going. And this is like, like I'm, you know, I'm 44. Um, I learned all this other stuff I learned, and now I watch the next generation doing what they're doing, and it's different because this was not something that my generation was experiencing, right? This is fat, fascinating to me, and I love watching it because it's, it's that next step of how we're developing time and feel and rhythm. It's, yeah. it's where the future's going, right? Yeah. Um, and beyond that, so keeping that, that pocket, so how are you, what are you, what, what are you doing to play ahead and behind like that? All right, so dead on the click, is dead on the click, is dead on the click. You're playing with the click, you're trying to sync yourself. If I'm playing quarter notes between these two limbs, I'm going, I'm just trying to line myself up to that click. Like, click, 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 click. Right? When I'm playing ahead of the beat, before I start, or even when I'm starting, I'm thinking, let me just push it a little. Let me let me push myself a little bit. Not line up exactly, but let me let me let me have this this anchoring point go a little bit ahead of the click and have that minuscule space between 100 BPM and like 100.2 BPM. Yeah. Like that little, and it just gives a sense of just you know you're you're bouncing, you're you're having a good time kind of thing. And, and yeah, and, and I think if we're talking in strict terms, I think that's a great example. 100, 100.2 or 1.3 yeah. or whatever, right? Um, it's not a 16th note, it's not a 32nd note, and that's the, 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 the tricky part about this, yeah. is that you can't really chart out this and, and give it to someone and say it's like Cannot this. Cannot classify it. Right, but you're right, it's finding that feel, and like when you're doing it against a click, you can, you can clearly hear that. It's like you're locking in, and you're either just ahead of it or behind it, and it's like staying consistent, right? Yeah. And, but the, that's the point, is that, that sort of breathing against that time. Playing it live, you're not necessarily playing to a click, and you're still able to do that because the band's collective time is here, and you decide to deviate from that, and you go, Hurr. and then the band just goes, right? Yeah. It's like this whole thing opens up, right? Mm -hmm. The key is though staying consistent to that 100.2 BPM or 99.8. Yeah. You have to stay there. If you go 100, 100.2, 100.4, 100.6, 101, 102, then that's rushing, and yeah. then the band has to follow you. If you're staying consistent there, as long as you're there, the band can stay where they are and you can make the whole, the music feel different. And another disclaimer, try this with your band before you do it at yeah. the gig. Because but, they're going to all react differently too to yeah. that. Yeah. And but finding that music that's appropriate for that is also a very big player in it. So finding styles that are a little more upbeat. And I would I would say, and I'm going to ask you this, from my perspective, the reason you can do both or the result of doing both of those things as well as you do makes your sense of time that much better. Like playing to the click becomes even easier when you're able to, because you're literally internalizing 100 and then you're just letting it drift and you're still here. Like that's the thing, you're still feeling it at 100. Yeah. That's, that's not disappearing and that's the only way that tension stays. It's easier to differentiate, well, easier to differentiate, <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. Easier to differentiate between when you're, you're, you yourself are rushing, dragging, or on, or on the click, when you know what rushing, playing behind, on the click, playing above, and, uh, and dragging are. All right, I think I'm gonna get you just more playing now. Yeah. So we just talked about layering rhythms, conversation between limbs, time elasticity. I'm gonna make you a bit of a challenge here. Okay. You brought us this great play along, it's a disco tune. So uh, it gives you lots of space to play with. So yeah. I think you should, play with those ideas and we'll run this track. So let's run that disco track and see what happens here.
Awesome. Lots of great conversation pieces there. Lots of really neat rhythm, bleh, rhythm layering. <sighs> I, yeah. That was awesome. Okay, so when we're going with this idea of, with all of the um, modern ideas and where we're going with that, you also put an, uh, an idea in here, drums in the forefront. Yeah. What is that referring to and, and what's our approach with that? All right, so... Um, the, the concept of drums in the forefront has been along, I think, since Alvin Jones, which, which we talked about earlier. He was a big pioneer in um, many, many, many different drum concepts. And I think this is one of the things that he helped along with, you know, like Tony Williams and along with the, uh, with the groups that they played in, John Coltrane, Miles Davis group, Old Quintet, Quartet, blah, blah, blah. All these groups allowed that to happen and through, them, through their influence, it started getting more um, prevalent. In, in drumming and to be in the forefront as a drummer it's it's you have to take some risks when it when it comes to playing this stuff you have to you have to keep the groove always keep the musicality and the groove you have to keep them down but making your drumming a little more you know interesting i guess with with by using these things to create a modern groove or by you know if it means instead of just going Playing the simple stuff, if 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 the music allows for it, you know, playing something like putting yourself out there, not being afraid to put yourself in the limelight a little bit, Add, adding to, and that adds to the whole band's. Not I don't want to say I don't want to say image, but it adds to the. <laughs> To the to the whole and in a good way. Um, it yes. a, yeah. It adds the whole band's atmosphere. When you when you play, you're that when that rhythm is in the front, if it's just in the back, yeah, there's a sense of like people in the crowd going, but when you're when you're when you're pushing it a little bit, when you're when you're when you're out there, then people you'll start to see people, you know, react in in the way that that you're putting yourself out there. But if you put yourself too much out there, you go something, you know, like <laughs> And, it, and the music doesn't call for it, then that's when you see uh, negative reactions. But you got to find the balance using, uh, you know, the layering of of rhythms and sounds as well, like I did in the um, in the disco track. But layering, the layering of rhythms, um, the time elasticity, if if you can, um, all that stuff to, to put yourself out there. Okay, so I think your reference to uh, to um Elvin Jones and Tony Williams is a great, great, great analogy because you're right. Like, like even before them, like Buddy Rich and, and Gene Krupa were sort of forefront drummers. They were, they were almost rock oh, stars. Oh yeah, Buddy Rich, and right? They're like rock stars, yeah. right? But you're right. In in the style of music, if you look at jazz, when Elvin started doing all that crazy polyrhythm stuff, everyone's like, "What is the drummer doing?" Like before that, the drummer was supporting and doing all kinds of cool stuff. But you're right, Elvin, Tony, Tony blew everyone's heads off when he yeah. started playing. Everyone's like, "Who is this guy?" Right? Um, and it's interesting. I mean, you're 15 and you're referencing like. Are, are icons of jazz, you know. So did you listen to a lot of jazz? Yeah. Um, the last two years have been um, jazz fusion intensive for me in that I just kind of, I not found, but I started listening to jazz. Like, I before, my, my the extent of my jazz knowledge was Buddy Rich. Okay. And Buddy Rich. Okay. And some more Buddy Rich. Great. But then I started, I, I, I was fortunate enough to... Um, uh, learned from a really great teacher, and I still am learning from him. Um, and he introduced me to, you know, I hadn't heard of Alvin Jones or Tony Williams, but he started pushing that a little bit. He slowly, he kind of stripped down all my knowledge of jazz and went, okay, here's the, here's the, here's the pattern, like the... Now, that's the rule, now break it. Now what else can you do with it? That, uh. that stays in the same vein. And he made, started having me listen to you know, all these great, great drummers and then became more modern, like right. you know, Mark Giuliano yeah. and, um, and even to go to like Vinnie Caliuta, he, he's modern and back then, like Steve Gadd, like, mm -hmm. all these unbelievable drummers who I didn't think could play like that. And I didn't know, because it, and it was complete, uh, Disregard to jazz, which I feel really bad for, but now I, I now I, now I know. Okay, I want to point out two more things that that people should know about you. You're like, what are you gonna tell them, right? <sighs> okay, no, I think it's important. You play a bit of guitar and bass. Yes, I do. 
how have those made a big difference in your drumming? I think si uh, since I picked up, uh, I picked up the bass and the guitar. Uh, I want to say three years ago, three and a half years ago. Okay. Bass like four or five, six years ago. But I never really got into it as much. But now that I'm like, now I've started really, really getting into it. Now I'm hearing what I'm playing and what the music that I'm creating from a different perspective. Right. Hearing it from the bass player's perspective. If I'm playing a super do like a crazy thing on the on the kick drum, and I want to play something in the bass, I can't play anything because I'm already filling up all that low yep. end space with that. Yep. So having that com uh, compare and contrast really really helps with again musicality. I think that's the, the underlying principle in in grooves, modern grooves, anything. Awesome. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to mention, I won't get super deep into this, but you have a lot of theater experience. Yeah. But what's important to know, so you were in uh, rock school, right? School of Rock. Sorry, School of Rock, pardon me, uh, which is, was on Broadway. Yes. And you did, your dad said about 600 shows. 600 something, yeah. <laughs> so, and you were 11? 12, yeah. somewhere so in there? Yeah, 11, 12. And I think, I think what I want to know, and I think people would love to know this, because you're very poised for someone who's 15, okay? Um, I should have brought my son for comparison. I'm kidding. <laughs> I love my son. I'm totally joking. But, thank you. Uh, but um, what did you learn by having to be in and on, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. on stage, in it, like from you know, day one to day 600, you had to bring something every day. So what did you learn from that? It was a lot. I, I, so I'm ashamed to say it, but I never really knew what Broadway was, and it's, I knew, like, oh, Broadway, but it was like, it was on this super high pedestal. I never, like, peered up and saw it, what it was. Probably not a bad thing, though, because then you're not terrified to do it because you had put it, you know, it was just yeah. like a thing, right? Um, it was, it was amazing learning how much work goes behind the scenes. Because if something goes wrong on stage or backstage, it's fixed like that. Yeah. Like, there was a hole in the ceiling at one point right. when we did the show, and it made no difference because everybody was on it. And, and, and the second, second thing I learned was a lot of professionalism goes into being on Broadway because they don't treat you like kids there. I'm sure. You have to be a professional to do your show. You have to get your work done because everybody else treats it like work. Like, I, I didn't. Um, a lot of, uh, most of the other kids didn't treat it like work. Actually, all of the other kids. I, I think it's a difficult concept to have at that age. Yeah. Right. Work. I mean, yeah. Aside the fact that you had to do it every day. Like that yeah. becomes a routine, right? But yeah, and even doing the same thing six hundred times <laughs> in a like, six hundred times, it never got never got boring because there's always something to look forward to, right? And and just and just you know how other people acted, how we could feed off of the audience. That's a big yep. thing. Even that applies to music as well. The audience is such a big player in how you how you how you work and how how you how you play. I mean because. If the audience not, is not responding to you, either they're a bad audience or you're, you're doing something wrong. Yep. If the audience is there and they're present and it's awesome, then you're awesome as well. I think with the audience comes your energy as well. 100%. All right, man. I think that's it. We've covered everything we wanted to cover. Yep. We're going to get you to play one more song. Yes. Oh, I wanted to mention also that disco track you wrote. Yes, that was yeah. all me. Yeah, and if you are a, a Drumio member, that's going to be in our Play Alongs feature soon, so you get to, to uh, do some disco with... Yes. Uh, with our man here. Uh, if this is your first time checking us out, thank you for joining us today. If you want to see more about what Drumio is all about, come on over to drumio.com and check us out. Uh, I'm gonna get just introduced. The last song is called, I'm gonna say, is it Slant? It's The Slant. The um, Slant. It's a song by Vinnie Valentino, Joel Rosenblatt, and Baron Brown. Um, it's, it's called The Slant for a reason. You'll see why. It's something to do with time, which relates back to our list today. This is today. awesome, mm -hmm. yeah, so. Um, and it's such a, such a fun song to play. All right. Raghav, thank you so much for your time here today. Yes. We really enjoyed having you here. Thank you for and, uh, having me. It's amazing. Uh, let's show them one more tune, shall we? Let's do it. All right. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Thank you.